High quality welds are a feature of stainless steel, and welding stainless steel is not difficult, but it is different than welding carbon steel. The important thing is to understand the differences between stainless steel and carbon steel, and alter the welding technique to accommodate them. By comparing their physical properties, it can be shown that austenitic stainless steels need a lower welding current to produce the same amount of heat. However, their lower thermal conductivity means that a steeper temperature gradient will be formed. This, combined with their higher coefficient of expansion, generates larger stresses, and so austenitic steels tend to distort more during welding. It is therefore essential that welds are jigged securely, and if possible, hard chromium-plated copper or aluminium backing bars should be used to conduct heat away from the weld area. This is TIG welding, and a filler wire is being used to add extra stainless steel to the weld pool. If it isn't possible to use a jig, then tack welds can be used to prevent movement during welding. The tacks should be close together and small enough to be absorbed in the final weld. By using the correct welding parameters, most of the techniques used to weld carbon steel can also be used for stainless steel. For instance, using the right electrode, current and polarity can produce excellent manual metal arc welds. MIG welding can also be used on stainless steel. In this type of welding, wire from a reel is fed to the welding gun. The power supply is connected to the wire and the workpiece, and a nozzle directs shielding gas onto the weld. The arc is struck between the end of the wire and the workpiece. The wire is then driven into this arc. It melts, and the molten metal forms the weld. Slow motion photography shows that at low welding currents, metal transfer occurs by the end of the wire dipping in and out of the weld pool. This is called dip transfer. At higher currents, molten metal sprays across from the end of the wire into the weld pool. This is spray transfer. Submerged arc welding also uses filler wire, but the weld is shielded by a blanket of flux instead of gas. The high electrical resistance of stainless steel is an advantage in spot welding because the weld is produced by passing an electric current through the steel. Resistance welding also uses the same principle. Both techniques are widely used for thin material. Laser welding can be used for thick as well as thin material. The edges of this thin strip are going to be welded to the edges of two others by electron beam welding. This type of welding was chosen because the heating is so localized that distortion cannot occur. Neither can heat tinting. The welding is done in a vacuum. These tubular handrails contain more welds than you might think. The stainless steel started off as a coil of flat strip. This was roll formed into a circular profile, and when the edges met, they were welded together to make a tube. The handrail was made by carefully lining up pieces of tube and tack welding them together. Sometimes a disposable sleeve is used to simplify the alignment. The main TIG weld was then laid down, with care being taken to avoid defacing the surface away from the weld. The heat tinting produced by the welding was removed when the weld was polished to blend in with the rest of the tube.